Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Let's continue working on this 2001 military Humvee from Iron Planet. Let's keep putting the suspension on over here on the driver's side front. We did get everything kind of in place, so let's button everything up, move on to the vent lines, and let's just get to work. Let's go. put the first new part in here in the nice little garage and they're the radiator support so I need to go, I get they're nice and painted go ahead and put those on protection pieces back on the uh, Humvee. I did put brand new stainless steel hardware on each of those. There's four mounting points for the metal on the back side of the hum or the gas tank when him replaced all that, of course. Hey, so me and my kids, we're about to set the front spring and the two inch suspension lift on the driver's side. Let's go. Okay, so we somehow got this somewhat set, but literally I had to go use the small jack because that one won't even fit in there because it's so low the ground. I wish the Humvee, the frame was just a little bit more off the ground. It would have made it easier. And honestly, I probably could have used it, swapped out my big jack stands for these small jack stands and just lifted it up. It probably would have been made it easier. But anyway, this will be fine with this jack but we did get it kind of set up here. I might have to rotate it. If you can see, I always judge by like half a finger width. Some even say a full finger width of a gap, but I may need to rotate it just a bit, but we did get the suspension right here. The little two inch spacer installed and it's looking good from here, guys. Big thanks to my family. So everybody wants to know how I compress or enough, get enough weight on top to
to compress the spring enough to put the bolt in from the shop. So this is how it's done. Check it out. So on the frame in here, I've got a piece of two by 12. I got a four by four by whatever. I don't even know what this is. I had cut it to use it on the back side. By the way, this works way better than the drywall lift. The drywall lift will break. There's too much pressure. So my sealant joists run this way. So I cut this piece to run the other way. So this is gonna probably hit four, three or four ceiling joists. And I'm sorry, you're not picking up the house. Sorry, Humvee, that spring's getting compressed. And this is how it's done. Already getting to use the new lighting. Ava, huge shout out to you. Thank you. I couldn't have done this without you. I had to straighten the thing out because it wasn't straight. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a little crooked where I had it. I guess I can't tell, you know, my cover and alignment from up there. <laughs> so she got, it's pretty straight. It's straight enough. And this right here is what you guys need. If you're in my shoes and you don't have a Humvee here providing weight, this right here is going to do just fine. That thing's already compressing pretty good. And all I, all I have it right now is just snug. And now I'm gonna go ahead and put some oomph into it. And this right here, you can tell. So here's the shock. It only has to come up, well, probably about two or three inches, but I know it's not all the way on the bottom down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and snug it up on the bottom and get it flush. And that way this will lift up a little bit more and we, we really won't even have to jack it that much more to get the bolt in. So guys, we got the bolt in here and I'm telling you what, it it was a lot. So we had a, a bunch of wood that was like to this side of the frame, all the way against the doors and against the wall over there. Because the frame, as you were jacking it up here, it was shifting this way, even though we chalked the wheels on all four sides, but it was still moving. So we had to adjust the, the four by four a couple of times. But other than that, we got it going. Ava was like, I don't know if it's gonna make it. Like, oh, it's gonna make it. I hate that I did scratch it right there. Look at that. Man, that'll make you so angry. I did that with the screwdriver. But anyway, hey, guess what? It's in with that spacer. That's why it was so much extra hard than the back was that spacer. That thing is uh, no joke right there, I'm telling you. But it looks really, really good. I'm gonna go ahead and singe down the bottom of the shock bolts. And that might be it for the night. It is getting dark, but, and I only got one more of those sides to do, and that is the passenger side. Yes, I can't wait till these are done. This might be the sketchiest part of the entire Humvee build. I don't know. The only other thing I can think I can compare this to is taking the body off and putting this body back on when you go to do that. So ah, we'll see what takes the cake. All right, guys, it is the next day here. And let's go ahead and start tightening up some of the suspension parts right here. Um, we get the, Linkage is on, the vent line's on, finish tighten up the shock, uh, all this stuff. Fill up the ball joints with grease, all the stuff that needs to be done. Let's go ahead and get this side squared away. Let's go. You ready for a new day, Jack?
refill the grease gun. I was completely out. I'm over here like, why wow, aren't the ball joints blowing up? All right, I'm gonna torque down the ball joint nuts here to 65 foot pounds. I looked it up online, that's what it said to. Um, I don't know, they ha I found a couple different variances, but this one seemed like a good reputable site. And they had it all in a nice little PDF thing, has everything on it, so it's kind of cool. Really good uh, website. But I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick and uh, move on. Moving right along. You know what? I'm sitting here looking at this. I think these nuts, the threads are got messed up. Probably when I was hammering them out. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I can reuse this. Hopefully the threads aren't stretched too bad on this, but it doesn't look like it. It definitely looks like these nuts are done. All right, I'm gonna try to find some more. All right, in the meantime, let's go ahead and put this axle in. Hey, more parts done, it's awesome. So every part I put on this, the garage floor gets a little cleaner. So that means I gotta jump on these brakes now. I can go ahead and paint them. Brackets already powder coated. I can paint the rotors. Um, actually, I do that one now. Since I got the axle on this side, I can go ahead and put the uh, brake system together over here too. But uh, I'm worried about these tie rod ends. What do you think I should do, guys? So this older new ones, I did not replace those. Those are, Pretty much the only thing I haven't replaced on this. Yeah, I don't know, we'll see. Tell me what you think. Hey, I remember, let's make sure we collapse the piston this time. Code number one. Okay, so I'm going to put a linkage on here 
and it does hit the lower control arm. So I'm gonna have to remove, uh, luckily I didn't even tighten these in yet, the sway bar. I'll go ahead and remove that, get this in place first, and then put the sway bar back up there. Let's go. Look at this rainy day. You bums. Guys, it is just looking really, really good in here. I'm telling you. Look at all that brand new hardware. Thing looks so good. Here is what came out of it. They held up, but I mean, the exact same bolt, grade eight, washers, everything. Now we can hook back up the sway bar right here. We can probably go ahead and torque that down too. All right, guys. So I'm gonna do any bolt that I've now torqued down to the right specs. I'm taking a red Sharpie and I'm just gonna put a line, preferably in one, that, see I can't draw. I'm just gonna put a line on it, whatever. That just lets me know that that bolt is done, like 100%. So I wanna do these to everything that I do from now on. And that way I won't miss anything. Cause you know like the bushings, up here, they cannot get bolted down until there's full weight on the vehicle and it's on the ground. Because if you tighten them up now, they would, it would be binding really bad once you put weight on it. Seventy-five foot pounds for the sway bar. Sixty foot pounds. What a yucky rainy day. I mean, it's so dark, even the Christmas lights are on out there. Or out there, yeah. Uh, oh well, let's keep working. All right guys, so what we're gonna do right now is go ahead and feed these vent lines and get these vent lines back where they need to go on this side. So guys, I'm rummaging through this box of stuff that came off the Humvee, and I found the deep fording switch that they actually just cut, and it was still in the box. Can't believe it. Cleaned it up a little bit. So I'm sitting here, and this is the vent hose, right? So one of you guys reached out to me to what, for what this was, and yeah, it's just the cut piece. They have them, there's three lumps that are cut, and I was able to put this back where it was cut from. Hence, there was, I'm grateful there was numbers sitting right here and the cut angle and everything. So this matched up beautifully. And I know now this went to the center of the deep fording switch. Hey, hope it helps somebody out because they're cut on almost every Humvee. Let's go.
these bolts right here, you're never gonna be able to find those. At least I haven't been able to new. So these bolts that hold all of the brake lines and all the vent lines are tapered and they're the only thing that's gonna thread into the, the actual thread of each one of these places where it mounts up to. Thanks for watching everybody. That's gonna be a wrap for today's video. This is really awesome, man. We got the front driver side suspension installed with our two inch spacer. That was really, really huge for me. And the four by four trick does work, which is really cool. So I can't wait to get on the uh, passenger side and get that thing going and get this thing back on all fours. Hit that like and subscribe button, guys. There'll be a lot more content coming on this Humvee. But until next time, see you later.